Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. I just got some stuff out of the barn. We're gonna head over to Clint's house. He's actually got that hickory tree that we cut down a few months ago up on his sawmill. We're gonna go get that thing milled up. Check this thing out, I'm pretty excited about it. So Clint just got done milling up some pine that he put on here. Here's what he's got. Some woodland mills. You see it right there. He'll explain it a little bit better in just a minute. And I'll also have him explain why he purchased it, but it kind of makes sense to me. But I'm just putting this out there. Full disclosure, this is not a how-to use a sawmill. This isn't anything like that. He hasn't really done a lot of milling with it yet. Uh, he's just been kind of playing around with it and learning as he goes so we're just doing some more learning today but i'm pretty excited about it here's the hickory logs over here if you guys remember those if you're new to the channel or you missed that video when we took that hickory tree down i'll throw up an info card put a link in the description you may want to go check that out real quick just kind of click through it to get caught up to speed might be a good idea might be a bad idea it's really your choice i suppose but either way at least you know where we're at on that but here's what we got left out of it we got three sticks out of it and the arrangement we came to is he gets to keep two for himself which he's already milled one up and then we'll mill this one up for me that i can use for hobby wood or, or what have you it doesn't really matter i'm just kind of excited to see this whole process work if i'm being honest you see he's got some other stuff that he's already milled up over here he's got a tree service that started uh, kind of bringing him some pines from the area which is kind of nice as well so as soon as he gets back around here, I'll have him explain this mill, why he got this mill in the first place, which I agree with it, and he's kind of got me convinced. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to say no at this point. And uh, we'll get going from there. wide open throttle it'll turn that on and it'll let your fluid go down and get onto your blade a little bit so then whenever your blade turns it keeps it cool and looped up as it goes through what I'm doing but I'm doing it
that to a side of the right there. I need to turn down a little more. <laughs> no, that didn't sound weird at all. That didn't sound... No, that was... Yeah. <clears throat> wow. This is freaking awesome. It's going to be great. Um, hey, I got a little planer if you want to see what it looks like. Have you now? Yeah. Well, you look like a shadow there. I can't uh, see your face at all. That right? That's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. I don't know if I told you this, but uh, Clint and I worked together for like three years full time for Mike. That's right. what we used to do. Oh, I got way too much. I'm digging down, you know. You know, obviously, you still got a little bit of roughness to it, but yeah, <clears throat> I didn't want to take too much off because I don't know how far you want to go with it either. Oh, look at that. You know, I was mad at this tree when it broke my windshield, but uh, is that right? I'm I'm feeling better about now it. Now we're cutting it up and you know revenge. I do what? <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out how I'm gonna get it. Oh, I'll probably take some with me down on top of the car. Let's see, you got roof rack. Oh, yeah. That. He said I can try it. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look what your elbow is. Strong. Up. It is. Strong. Go down with this mill. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> When you started off, I feel like you were excited. 
I was very excited. Uh, yeah. Did it show? It did. Okay. You know how I know? You know how I know you're excited? You took off and you were like, this is awesome! And you pushed it so hard and so fast. That's exactly what I did. You see how much sawdust you have left over here? And then you're like, maybe I should slow down a little bit. And you did, and you're like, no, this is cool. No, I slow down. It's fine. It's fine. I want to enjoy this. No, we're just going to eat it up, man. You know? Just take your time. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. This is cool. Though. <clears throat> that color coming out. Yes. God. This stuff is really cool, too. I know how dark that is. Yeah. Is it going somewhere? Oh, geez. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. So, you know what would be real handy right now? A wedge. Well, you got a friend. <laughs> no. So, yeah, you can put that up on there. They're more expensive. I would go, Friends. Friends. go just a little lower than middle. Does that make sense? No. Oh, yeah, that's real scientific. There you go. Been making more stuff, selling. Is I, right? I see him show up with trailer loads of, Log? of, of milled stuff. Are you serious? So the main reason that I bought uh, the sawmill is so we are building a garage currently, me and my wife, at our property. And um, we pour the footers um, in March of 2020. Well, everybody knows how crappy 2020 has been. And uh, so that was as far as we got, simply because I didn't know if I was gonna have a job by the time all this crap was over with. I poured concrete for Tell City Concrete and um, we were swamped and I never really got another chance to do anything else to it. So then by the time that everything slowed down and I had enough time to actually do anything with the garage, um, it was a couple months ago. Well, over 2020, lumber prices went absolutely through the roof. Uh, for everything that I needed in March was around $2,400. And then the exact same stuff minus the plywood uh, or OSB that I needed um, in, I don't know, I think September, um, maybe August or something. Um, it doubled, over doubled. So it was like $4,800 uh, for everything else besides the OSB. I'm the kind of guy that likes to make everything myself, kind of like cleaning. And um, I decided that I wanted to buy a sawmill. And of course, everybody wants to go cheap at first. And uh, so I looked at Harbor Freight and it was uh, okay, but I never bought it. I uh, got to doing more research. Of course, everybody goes on, on Facebook or on Google or whatever and does research on items. And uh, I found this one. And so looking at how much weight that my tractor would pick up determined on how big of a sawmill that I really wanted to buy. Um, because I knew that if I bought a massive sawmill, I couldn't use it to 100% of its potential. So I bought the smallest one uh, that Woodland Mills had to offer, which will handle 22 inch in diameter logs um, and about 16 foot. And that is the absolute most that my tractor will handle. Um, and I'm the kind of guy that makes use of everything that I have. And so when it comes to how much weight my tractor will lift, as compared to what the sawmill will do, that's kind of what I based everything off of. The price was right. Uh, I had an idea in mind of how much I wanted to spend. And it was about $1,500 cheaper than what I could buy the lumber for. So it was kind of a no brainer to just buy a sawmill. Uh, I live on uh, 130 acres out here and a lot of it is woods. Um, so why not buy my own sawmill, cut what I want out of it, and then I can make my own trim, I can make my own furniture. I mean, there's just, it's in those possibilities whenever it comes to a sawmill. So that was the main reason why I bought that sawmill and, and, uh, and, and got my own instead of buying lumber from now on.
I'm looking for my keys. Your keys? Yeah, my keys. Oh, like to move the car? To move, yeah. <laughs> Y'all, that's what I'm looking for. I think what I did is I got out and I just threw them as far as possible. <laughs> Stand back. Get back! Buddy, you wouldn't huh? believe it. That sucker's got to be. Yeah, yeah. I heard it whining. Yeah, jeez. I don't have time for these shenanigans. I've got other shenanigans to do. It's sunny out here. We're gonna want to forward a little bit. You can see I'm, I've already got some sand. Oh yeah, on. no, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll slide her forward just a little bit to, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to see what this looks like. Well, I got her pointed. Right. She's ready to go. Yeah. She's ready to go. Hey, I tell you what, man. We do a minor cut on the end of this here board, and you and you and you, and you put it up there just right. You got some downforce going on. There. I need downforce. She's all over the place. <laughs> she is loose. I'm telling you. Okay. I don't, do you have a plan? Is there a plan? Wow. Oh, plan. A plan. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, small pieces we can put in the front seat and really balance it out. Exactly. Well, you really need to put it across both front seats, yep. you know, or else you're going to be heavy on the right. It's really not bad. No, I've really got some sawdust in my mouth there. Yeah. Yeah, the wind's blowing this way. Yeah, we're planning on throwing some zip ties on here, and it'll go all the way from here to where you live and be totally fine. You've never seen zip ties this big. Oh my they, god. Uh, they resemble ratchet straps, actually. <laughs> yep. Hey, I just busted in here. So we got everything milled up on this, and it is awesome. This, listen, I always knew I wanted a mill, and after watching this thing run, I'm hooked. I'm addicted. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I promise you, one of these will be coming to our property at some point in the future, and I cannot wait. We've got most of it or everything we were comfortable getting uh, loaded up on the outback there and that'll be fine You guys know the truck is broken down at this point now a while back. Oops Now a while back. I had some firewood left over that I split you guys know I don't use firewood But every now and I just split it for kind of stress relief or what have you and Clint does use firewood and so does his mom So they came out and got a couple pickup truck loads of firewood and we traded them good old horse trading and bartering system we traded them for some pottery, and I'm gonna show you your pottery shop because it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still Clint, it's not his mom. Do you guys expect his mom? It's not her. <laughs> I just wanna show you some of the stuff she makes. It's French Ridge Pottery. I'll put a link to her Facebook channel, Facebook channel, Facebook page in the description. But she makes some incredible stuff. It's awesome stuff. How long has she been doing this? Uh, let's see, about... 12 years, maybe 13 years or so. So she started in a little uh, little hole in the wall shack or whatever, and <clears throat> next thing you know, she's Indian. in this massive shop, and uh, yeah, she makes a lot of it. Goes to a lot of shows, makes a lot of money off of it and stuff. People where'd love you, her stuff, man. Where'd you say her next show is at? Uh, I'm wanting to say it's in Memphis, but I can't remember. So she goes a little bit everywhere, that's for sure. That's awesome. So very awesome. But she always posts on her Facebook page um, where she's gonna go, where she's gonna be. So. All right. So I found the mugs. They're down here. We traded them. Oh, look at that. Clint found a business card. So, <laughs> do you remember when I used to think that uh, your mom was your brother? I do. I do. Oh, your brother Robbie. <laughs> your brother Robbie. No, I'm sorry. I knew Clint for a year and thought Robbie was his brother, but uh, I'll put all this information in the description, so be sure to check it out. And uh, here's what she made for us. These are awesome. It's got Chelsea and I's initials on there. Pretty sweet. Man, those are awesome. This is a bitchy right? you know? So I might have mentioned it earlier, but Clint and I have been friends for quite some time now. We used to work full-time for Mike. In fact, that's that's how we met. We were on Mike's ICF crew. And we poured a lot of ICF homes for Mike, and we had a great time doing it. We always have a good time when we get together. So not only does his mom make awesome pottery, but Clint is into cars quite a bit. And he's actually got a YouTube channel called CB Yodas. 
I'll try to put an info card up if I remember, but if not, there'll definitely be a link in the description. He's gonna show some of the cars that he's got, and they're pretty freaking awesome. So this is the first one. This is the rarest. Oh, no. This is. <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a Toyota, man. It's got a wood grain exterior. It, well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah they can't. call them into Willys Outback. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not. Oh, oh my god. This is surprisingly similar to the pottery shop. <laughs> so this here is my 1977 Toyota Celica. So it is the first uh, Celica to come to the States. I've got a 77 and I've got a 73. So um, this one here had the less miles on it. It was in the best shape. Uh, I think it's got 39,000 miles on it, 34, somewhere around there. That's crazy. Um, yeah, the guy had it parked in a barn from 1984. So uh, it sat in a barn since 84. And uh, I bought it from him and uh, it's been, an awesome project so far. Now you work on this with your boy, don't you? Yeah, with yeah, Brian. Me and Brian, we work together on it. Uh, between this one and uh, the '73 Celica, and then we bought him a uh, 1985 Celica Supra. So he's got, he's his, got own, his own car. He's got his own car. How old's Brian? Eight years old. Eight years old. Yeah. Let's look at Brian's car. All right, cool. <laughs> we haven't really done much to it yet. I'm gonna cut it. This is his '85 Celica Supra. It is the P-Type. Uh, they had an L-Type and they had a P-Type. The P-Type was a performance model. The L-Type was a luxury model. So this is the uh, P-Type. Um, it is a five-speed car. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's got the W58 in it, transmission in it. And it's got a 5M in it. Uh, 5M, which is the uh, inline six-cylinder. There's nothing real special about it. It's naturally aspirated, but uh, we plan on doing a 2JZ GE swap in it. Um, and then maybe eventually putting a turbo on it. Um, but it's got an independent rear suspension on it, so that's going to be a little tricky to work with um, with the CV axles in the rear and everything. So uh, You got a few videos of this up already. Yeah, you? yeah. We, we got a video of picking it up, uh, going to get it, picking it up, and then cleaning it up. And I know it's dirty now, but we wanted to clean it up to see what we had to work with. We just wanted to see how rough the body was and whatnot and, you know, to see what we were going to get into. So, but I mean, most of it's going to be gutted anyway. And then we're going to do a bunch of body work and then repainting it. Uh, so we just got a beautiful blue that we're going to repaint it. That's kind of where we're at. So we made it back just fine. It's actually the next morning. Did you guys see the sunrise this morning? It was gorgeous we're gonna get these things off here look at them a little bit closer and i'll kind of tell you what my long-term plans with them are and i want to have a little bit more of a conversation about that sawmill and i'm starting another project today i'll tell you what a project oh I'll tell you what project i'm working on today which will be an upcoming video So here's what we ended up with. It's kind of a mix. We've got some live edge stuff. We've got some one by four ish stuff here we can work with. This was where that tree came from. I was telling you about from that one video. It came from right here. And this is why it went. That's our park. This is our parking area. If you remember, the tree had an introduction to the windshield. I wasn't too excited about that. So we ended up taking it down. All in all, this is pretty cool. Clint has two more logs he's going to mill up and keep for himself, which is awesome. I cannot wait to see what he does with them. And I have to say, let's go over here and talk. Okay, so all in all, I've been on the fence about getting a sawmill for a long time. We sit on about 14 acres, majority of it wooded, majority of it hardwoods, and a lot of dead standing ash. And Chelsea and I have a lot of plans for future building, not just the YouTube yacht, which Anything we milled up now would not be dry enough in time to use on the YouTube yacht. But we have some future cabin plans, shelter houses, some goat pens, some goat runs, a small barn, a better chicken coop for the chicken, that kind of thing. And this would be absolutely awesome. I think we'd make our money back 
in no time just by lumber savings alone. Now, Clint made some really good points, and I'm glad I went over there to do this because, and I know, there are lots of awesome sawmill channels, and you can learn a lot of tips from sawmill channels on YouTube, but the only way to really learn and for things to really click, I think, is to do it in person, and today was an awesome learning curve. And a couple things Clint said that really clicked with me is why he sized that mill the way he sized it, and it actually makes really good sense. There's no point in getting a mill that can handle bigger logs if all I have is that 755 to get the logs up on the mill. And I think that size that Clint has would be absolutely perfect for us. So I'm glad I went to see that because that clicked. I probably would have bought a bigger mill that I would have never been able to use the full capacity on. And if I run into a few trees where that mill's too small, well, I've got the Alaskan mill. I can get her knocked down a little bit into millable size for that mill. So I think that's gonna work out pretty good. I don't know when we're gonna get it. I really don't. That would be a pretty big investment for us. And with the YouTube yacht going on right now, you know, maybe the summer, maybe the fall, I hope within the next year, cause we've got a lot of great projects coming up and that would just be phenomenal. Now, like I said, there are lots of great channels with sawmills and have a lot of experience with sawmills and have a lot of tips for that kind of thing. So if you guys know those channels, shout them out, put them in the comments, big channel, small channel. I don't care if they know what they're doing and they've got good tips and tricks for band saw mills. I want to know about that channel and I want to check it out. And if you guys watch those channels, you know, if you don't mind, just say hey for me and uh, see if they've got any tips and tricks for beginners, any tips and tricks on why they sized their sawmill the way they did. I would really appreciate that help. As far as what I'm going to do with that stuff, I've got a small wood shop in the basement and I really can only handle about six foot material. Those are 12 foot boards. I'm going to cut those all in half at six foot, stack them on some stickers down there in the basement, and then we'll try to make something out of it in the future. I do a little woodworking. There's an old video here if you want to check it out. This is when I made some music boxes for the girls for Christmas out of some cedar that we Alaskan milled if you want to check that out. So I do think I will definitely utilize it. I'm just not quite sure what yet. Today was more about a learning experience and seeing if I think it would be a good fit for the property. And I mean, check and check. It was awesome. It was really, truly awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go check out Clint's channel, CB Yoda's. If you like working on cars, if you like kind of family, it is definitely family friendly content. He doesn't post very often. He maybe posts about once a month because like all of us, he's got a full-time job and a part-time job and he's trying to build a house and a garage at the same time, just like we're doing out here. So he doesn't have a lot of time for it, but he does post about once a month and they're pretty awesome videos. Also check out his mom's Facebook page for that pottery. She does do some shipping. I think he got a messenger to kind of work that stuff out. She does do custom orders and she makes beautiful, beautiful pieces. And I always love going over there to see what she's up to. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. All the support, the likes, the comments, you guys know that by now. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.